Greetings friends! Man, the past few weeks have been really, really busy for me and my family. Things have been busy on the farm as well as off the farm. On the farm, and it always seems like July and August are really difficult months for us as far as the weed pressure here. They're just super crazy. I think this year may have been the worst of all because we've gotten a lot of rain and then with that and then the temperatures being conducive for weed growth it was like the weeds were just just i'd cut them one day back the the next <laughs> kind of reminds me of uh, that movie santa claus with with him allen how he'd shave his beard the next morning and just grow right back <laughs> that's kind of what i felt like was happening with the weeds uh but right now we're into september I feel like we have a good control over the weeds right now and uh, things are going fine and uh, i actually got to use snake grabber that one of you purchased for us to get a snake out of the area where our dogs had it pinned in and i was like oh don't kill a snake is one of those snakes that you want to have around so i used a snake grabber to get it out and it worked great i never thought that that grabber would work as great as it did but it was really really easy to move the snake out with that grabber um but we got a lot of things going on the farm today but before that with all the things that we had going off the farm I just learned so much and it's, it's so important that whatever age you are that you continue to to have a continued education so that way you're continuing to learn and uh, we were able to visit an ostrich farm which we'll talk about in another video so stay tuned for that as well as just our series at polyface I learned so much at polyface farm from Joel from the stewards and from Daniel I didn't get Daniel on video a lot but Daniel Man, he's a really good manager, and he's the farm manager there at Polyface. And uh, trying to take what I learned and I saw there and begin implementing it in a way, in a context that works for us. And uh, one of those things was they have a meeting every morning where the, the stewards and Daniel, that everybody gets on the same page. And uh, I think that's something we've done here and there, but I really want to make sure it happens every day. So that way we know what's expected of each of us and that way we can communicate things that need to be done. And look who's here, it's Ben. Good morning, Ben. Good morning. <laughs> and another huge lesson that stood out to me was the importance of team. It's not just Joel and, and Daniel running the, the farm at Polyface, but it, it requires a team. So just really having that in my mind to develop the team atmosphere here even more because I can't do it by myself. I need people like Ben <laughs> to help me out as well as the rest of the family. So we can continue to grow and expand. I don't expect to have the, the, the huge operation that they have at Polyface, but to, to be able to, to do it in a way that works for us. All right, Ben, so if you could harvest some of the purple peppers, the Japanese one, just start filling it up in the caterpillar tunnel. Mike is here, you wanna help Ben? Are you dressed? You're not naked, are you? <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Out of bed? <laughs> wow, this guy's going camera. I need to get his boots. Oh, you ready to help Ben now? Yeah. All right, go get him. That little guy is something else. Good morning, Josiah. Good morning. I think we need more feed. Need some more feed? Yep. All right, let's look here and see what we got. Yeah, you're right. We are low. We got one bag. All right. Well, you got enough to go ahead and feed the chickens this morning, so go ahead and do that. And then when we have our meeting later, we'll have somebody go ahead and pick up some more feed.
All right, right here we have a number of our starts here for fall. We have lettuce, kale, and cabbage. Um, but it's growing a little bit slower than I would like for it to be growing. Uh, this is a mix that I made, which normally works okay. But uh, recently went to Dirt Craft Organics to get some more of his mix because his is the best that I have ever used. And so neat to see him again. Uh, see Adam there and his operation. And uh, if you're in the area and you're looking for a good soil mix, highly, highly recommend it. It has it for starts, for microgreens, for hemp. Uh, it's great. Uh, so we're going to start some more a little bit later on. But uh, I think we're going to go ahead and pull everybody together to go ahead and meet, get on the same page. We'll let Ben and Micah keep plowing away. Josiah's almost done with feeding chickens this morning. And uh, I think Salem needs something to do. You putting them in there? Can you grab the red one? There's a red one in there. It's down in there. See it? Yep, get it. Good job. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All righty, well, let's get started for today. See, Josiah pointed out that we need some more feed, right, for the chickens? We need yep. some more layered feed. All right, so Lacey, if you could pick those up. At the same time, we have uh, an order from Tia that we need to fulfill. We just have a few of those. So Ben's already started, him and Micah, with harvesting the peppers. We need a few more items, uh, like the hot peppers and basil and okra to add to that. So if you guys could go ahead with Ben and harvest the okra, that would be great. Ben, that works for you? Sounds good to me. <laughs> so... I'll take care of harvesting the hot peppers and basil. If you guys could do the okra, that'd be great. So that way we can uh, have mommy can take those to Tia at the same time of uh, picking up the feed. Uh, let's see here. And then after that, we're gonna have Sayla. You're gonna drive the lawn tractor, and we're gonna be working with Ben. And Ben and I are gonna be shoveling compost and adding them to the garden beds. Sound like fun? Let's get started. Chinese five color peppers. Hot, hot, hot. If you're looking for a really spicy pepper, this is the pepper. It's pretty hot and really prolific. So we definitely have a bunch of these. I must admit that for the longest time, I was a loner. Wanted to be by myself, work by myself. People tell people, just, just leave me alone. Uh, but as I have done the homesteading thing and have, have grown, I've learned that I need help. I don't need to be alone. We don't need isolation. One, it's not good for us mentally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, but also, we, to be able to be more productive, we need each other. We need to surround ourselves uh, with with the family, with the team, with our own little tribe of people that help lift us up and encourage us when we're down, help us with various projects so that way we can get more accomplished. I know some of you may be homesteading and, and doing it by yourself because of circumstance, um, but if you can, as you can, start surrounding yourself with people who can help you and you can help them as well. So uh, just, just some of the things that I'm trying to keep in mind here and uh, because for us, for our homestead, our farm, to continue to expand and grow, uh, we have to expand and grow as a team. It's not just the Mike Show here, even though it's called Fit Farmer. I rely on everybody who helps out here. Ben, I must say, it's looking good, buddy. Appreciate that.
There's been a number of things that I've noticed about myself personally as I'm going through this character growth of learning to work with others and like people. It's not that I don't like people. It's just as we deal with people who are different than us, which everyone is, we, we run into issues with communication and, and so many other things just because we all have our individual minds and brains and, and we think and act differently. So uh, that's just learning to, to deal with others. Uh, on top of that, uh, being a personal trainer for years, uh, just telling people what to do. And when, when you're a trainer, you don't necessarily ask somebody, could you please go do this exercise? Or could you please go do 10 more reps of that? No, you just kind of say, all right, here's what we're going to do. Let's go do it. But uh, it's a little bit different when you're working with people in a different atmosphere. It's like, I need to learn to ask people. Hey, could you go do this for me? Or hey, could you go do that? So that's just some of the things I'm learning along the way, as well as having patience with others and, and just wanting to see them grow as well and, and look beyond myself and even beyond the project sometimes. Even trusting Ben to drive my lawn tractor. <laughs> Ben, could you go get me one more load? Yes, sir. Thanks. And trust. Trust is another one. Be able to trust the people that you're working with, with the jobs and tasks that you ask them to do, as well as use your equipment, like my lawn tractor there. So, um, yeah, when you, when you buy some equipment, it may not be cheap and you don't have the most lucrative budget in the world, definitely takes trust. <laughs> uh, but Ben does a great job, and Taylor drives the lawn tractor as well. And uh, we'll start working with Josiah more on learning how to use it, but uh, we're getting there. Alrighty, so Ben, Josiah, and I were working on this bed. Actually, Josiah was doing some weed eating along the backside, uh, but Ben brought in the cultivator, tilled up the bed here because uh, we need to do a little bit of shaping in here. We haven't used this bed in quite some time, and uh, we're going to be adding a, a lot of compost. But we've been doing a lot more no-till, but we still till occasionally. So overall, the concept is to till less, but this bed, we, we did decide to till here. But next, we're actually gonna be working together as a team. And let me tell you, one of the things that I learned as we've gone on, and even talking with Joel, he had a number of conversations with me that I didn't record, but one of them he was talking about, at the beginning, people who you bring on to work with you, uh, you they really don't help you out a lot because you spend a lot of time and energy just showing them what to do. And they actually cost you money at the beginning. But as, as time goes and they improve on things, they actually maximize your time. And as I have the kids learning to do more and more here, as well as Ben, who's been helping us out for uh, quite some time now, they're actually maximizing my time here. So it's like multiplying myself in a lot of ways. And, and uh, that's one of the things to think about as you're having people help you out. That at, at Initially, it's like an investment. You're not quite getting your return quite yet. Uh, the people you're just you're just pouring your time and energy into showing them how to do what you need them to do which makes you you do need to be mindful of who you bring on to do that with but after some time they really will start excelling and start propelling the things that you're doing even faster so right now we're gonna work together Sayla's gonna be driving the lawn tractor and she's gonna be carting down the compost in the buckets that Ben is loading at the top of the hill, and then Sayla's gonna drive it down to me, and then I'm gonna be putting it in this bed right here, so we'll have a team system going.
one thing I've learned. Everybody needs encouragement for doing a good job. Kids, and even adults. I didn't expect you guys to come help. Thanks out. Thanks for helping. You're welcome. I did this. You did? Yeah. Good job, pal. Where'd it go? Mm. It could be challenging passing some of this knowledge on as far as how the how-tos of doing it and, and, and just having to step back. Because sometimes it feels like as I'm having the kids and, and Ben and other people doing things in different areas that I would normally be doing, instead of me doing them, which I, I do enjoy doing, I'm having to spend more mental energy planning and figuring things out and also going back and forth running around now to make sure that everyone has what they need. So it's not one of those things that I look like it's a situation where I want to lord it over them and say, you guys work for me. <laughs> no, it's more of like a, a servant leadership where yes, they're helping me out here on the homestead, but it, overall it helps us out together as a team. And then I'm trying to make sure that I provide them what they need at the same time share my knowledge my experience and uh, so that way hopefully these things pass down and it it benefits them and they can just carry on and and go beyond me and be even better isn't that right Micah? Yeah! <laughs> ben what in the world are you doing man <laughs> being lazy being lazy that's it you're done you're out of here <laughs> just kidding we're all done. I love you. Good job. Hope I didn't work you too hard. You got a little sweat going there. No, yeah. <laughs> you just didn't just pour that water on yourself? No, <laughs> not this time. <laughs> all righty. Harvest done with the okra, basil, peppers, and all that fun stuff. And bed prep done as well for the lower and middle beds. For years now, I've done a to-do list. I call it, I like to call it an action list sometimes uh, because number of years ago, I think it was my early 20s, I had a job and my boss would constantly come and ask me to do various tasks and he was a really good boss. I learned a lot from him. His name was Rod. Rod, if you ever watched this, thank you so much for all that you taught me. But uh, when he would come to me, he would, he would tell me the task that he would ask me to do a task. Then he would later follow up sometimes a day or two later or whatever it may be. And then more times than I would like to admit, he would come back and follow up with me about those tasks. And you know what my answer was? Oh, I forgot to do that. And I was just like, bum. I feel like I just kept letting him down. I may not be the fastest learner that there is, but after 
too many times of, of having that response to him. I was like, you know what, Mike? You need to start writing this stuff down. So that's when I started writing, having a to-do list, and it's, it makes a world of difference having order in your life. To-do list brings order, brings a sense of accountability, and if it's a really good sense of satisfaction of checking off that list once you've completed the task. So uh, I'm really glad that I do that, and I encourage others to do that as well. Another thing that I do, in addition to the action list, to-do list, is I also write on there a what not to do list things that i want to try to avoid doing whether it be scrolling on social media or whatever but mine right now is do not be harsh so whenever i ask somebody to do something that i'm trying to ask it with love and gentleness as i ask them to do it and uh in a leadership role when you're you're giving people things to do and you're and you're you're working with people uh, there's a lot to learn but having a list in order makes it a blessing for, for everybody involved well, I got a lot more work to do today. Sorry if I blabbered a lot today, but uh, we got more work to do. We'll see you next time.